Our next speaker might be familiar to you if you are a fan of the TV series Survivor. How many of you have heard of that TV series? Our next uh, speaker has been on the show twice, including with her daughter, who she brought with her today, I'm sure willingly, uh, her daughter Sierra and her granddaughter Layla. Please give it up for Laura Moret, who's running for House District 20 State Representative. Thank you, Portland. Hello, family. You guys look good. Lila Rose, I tell you what, I'll survive on an island with you any day, girl. She is a fighter, and I'm so thankful that she's here today. Um, like they said, we survived Samoa, Philippines together, and then Sierra just recently survived the island of Cambodia. But more importantly than that, we are survivors of potential victims of Roe versus Wade as well not just spanning three generations, but three decades. You see, it's my honor and privilege to share with you a little personal story about a journey that affects all three of us. It started 30 years ago when my best friend came to me in high school and said that she thinks she might be pregnant. She met me at my locker and said, what do we do? I said, I don't know. I don't have an answer, but I'll support you. So she found out about this place, this place that sounded really, really great because we knew that we could go to this place and find out if she was pregnant and get help and neither one of our parents would be the wiser and no adults would know. So we got in our car, we left our closed campus and we drove to a place you guys all might be familiar with. It's called Planned Parenthood. Now, my story includes you guys very much so, and I'll explain to you in a minute how you all are a part of my story without you even knowing it. We got to Planned Parenthood, and I waited out in the lobby. Not but 15 minutes later, my best friend came out, her eyes all puffy, and she said, yes, I'm pregnant. We didn't know what to do, but we got in our car. We went back to school. We walked straight to the counselor's office, and I said, my friend needs to talk to you. We got slightly reprimanded for leaving school and I was told without question to get back to class and they would take care of my friend. Well, praise the Lord, she had good parents. She came from a broken home. She was raised by a single mom, but both her, both her mother and father were very plugged into her life. They helped her make a good decision. She now has a 29-year-old son and she's been married to that father for 29 years. Very, very proud of her. Well, a couple years later, I found myself in that exact same situation. This time a little bit older. Lived out of the house, worked two jobs, 18 years old, and I found out that me and my fiancé at the time were going to be expecting. I know that fear that every woman goes through when they find out that they're pregnant no matter what your situation in is, am I ready to do this? Am I ready to be a mom? I was living with a friend at the time and she thought she was doing the right thing and she said, hey, I made you an appointment at Planned Parenthood. And I was a little confused at this time because I knew what I was already pregnant. I knew that I didn't need to be tested if I was pregnant. I wasn't aware of what other practices they performed. So I said, well, I know I'm pregnant. I don't need to go see a doctor. And she said, no, I made an appointment for you to have an abortion if you want one. I was gobstruck. I was at a crossroads where I never thought I would have to be at. I, I, had, I didn't even know that that was an option for me. And I praise the Lord that both myself and my best friends were able to walk out of the jaws of Planned Parenthood because we did not know what that facility did. And that leads me to you folks. Because of the work you guys have all been doing, and because your continued effort to bring awareness to what Planned Parenthood does now, everybody is aware of what goes on at Planned Parenthood now. Everybody is aware of that. And that's because of you guys. Thank you. Thank you. 
So now that brings us to this current generation. You know, it wasn't but um, a couple years ago, I found myself faced with another unplanned pregnancy, but this time it wasn't me. It was my 17-year-old daughter. Now, we weren't told in the traditional way of mom and dad, can I talk to you? We actually found a note that she had written in her bedroom to the father that was saying, I'm pregnant, we're gonna get it taken care of. When, at once it's taken care of, I'll go to the gym, our relationship will be better, everything will be okay. And as a mother that hears that, and as a father as, as well, I know I can speak for my husband, it is if somebody takes your heart out of the chest and is standing on it. So as I continued to read the letter, it said that, but don't worry, the father's mother was going to meet her at school and pick her up and take her down to Planned Parenthood. Well, over my dead body. Absolutely. Her father and I got in our car, showed up at school the next day. The look on her eyes was like, what are you doing here? And we said, get in the car. Get her in the car and we locked the doors. We did. And I drove her straight down to a dear friend of mine's house. My friend's name is Terry Nordone, and she started a ministry. It's called Save One Ministry. And she ministers to women and men that have suffered in silence, that made that mistake of having an abortion, and have lived in, in, in um, suffering for years. And so I took Sierra down to Terry Nordone's house, and I sat her in the living room, and I said, before you make any decision, dear one, you're going to listen to somebody. And Terry sat there, and she shared her heart, she shared her love, and she shared her story. We left there, and I think I can speak for Sierra to say that she wasn't too happy with me. She was, you know, teenagers are generally really never happy with you in general, let alone locking her in a car and driving her to another friend's house. So as the weeks went by, I told Sierra, I know we live in a pro-choice state but your choice was having sex. After that, your choice is either you are gonna keep the baby or we're giving it up for adoption. That is your choice, my dear. Now, where I give my daughter all of the credit is I know that she feels that, at the time she felt that we were forcing it on her, but I know full well and she knows full well she could have went down at any time and got the procedure performed without her father and I knowing. And so she is the one that actually made that decision, very much so. So, so to end the story here, and I found myself being very manipulative with Sierra because there was no way in heck I was going to let my grandbaby be adopted out because I just didn't think I could do that. And I was being really manipulative with her and asking her, well, do you think that if you give it up for adoption, you'll miss it? And one day I was in my laundry room and the Lord convicted me. And he said, love always wins. So we were driving to the doctor and I asked Sierra, Sierra, will the sex of the baby matter? If you find out if it's a girl, will you say, yes, I want it? And a boy, I don't know, boy, are, boys are kind of honorary. And she said, no but I think I would like a girl. We go down to the doctor's clinic and they do the ultrasound and the technician looks up and she says, oh, would you like to know the sex of the baby? And Sierra looks at me with her beautiful eyes and we both nod and she, we said yes and the doctor says, it's a little girl. And this is our little girl right here, <laughs> Layla Ray. So in closing, you make a difference. You made a difference to me. You made a difference to Sierra. You made a difference to Layla. And you make a difference to the people now that know that there is a choice. There is a choice out there, right? So thank you. 
Um, she mentioned I'm running for state representative. I'm running for District 20 in Salem because we all have a way to make a difference. If you're not in my area, find somebody, find a legislator that is running in your area and support them. Call them up. Knock on doors with them. Help, help with fundraiser. Help with campaigning. Don't stop. Don't stop. We are making a difference. So God bless you all.